Hey guys, welcome back. If you know me by now, just for a little bit, then you know that my favorite gear to review are DAX or digital to low converters. I cannot tell you why. Uh, maybe their complicated nature somehow excites me a little bit more. And uh, even before starting this channel, I had plenty of DAX. Uh, too many of them, I was swapping them uh, very, very often. Uh, but in the latest three years or so, I believe I've tried all possible DAGs that I wanted to hear at my place. That's, uh, you know, the biggest perk of being a reviewer. So, uh, the last year I've tried a Gustard X26 Pro, which completely shattered all my preconceptions about Delta Sigma modulation DAGs, uh, oversampling DAGs. Uh, that one sounded better than my own unit that was by about 2.5 times more expensive. So yeah, that was an amazing sounding unit. This one is a follow-up to that unit that swapped ESS Sabre DAX with ladders of resistors. So yeah, this is an art wire ladder DAC. So will it be in the top 20 DACs that I ever heard? How about in the top 10 DACs? Or maybe even top five best DACs that I've heard at my place at any price point. So strap yourself in, get yourself a nice drink and let's check out the latest. Gustard R26 discrete. Let's go. Build quality wise, as you can see, it's exactly as big, exactly as massive and heavy as the X26 Pro. And that's a good thing in my book, but it no longer looks like a Tiger One tank. So as you can see, uh, sharp edges and pointy corners are no more on the R26. So it's more elegant, it's smoother, it's slicker looking. It has a wider and a bigger OLED screen in the middle, so of course you can use it much easier in a stereo setup. Even the lateral heat sinks are so much cooler looking now. I find them smoother and way more elegant. And it seems that Gustav took every single word that I've said about the X26 Pro and completely remolded that unpolished look. Obviously it uses a machined aluminum case. You can have it in matte black or matte silver. You'll find the same legendary feet, which are honestly the best feet that I've seen on any DAC. This thing is business. I see a high quality craftsmanship, an excellent attention to details, and I simply cannot complain about its top-notch build quality. As for controls, you can find a standby button right here. You have a big and wider OLED screen in the middle. And to its right, you have a volume wheel with a button in the middle that can control its user interface. On its back, you can spot the widest variety of digital inputs as USB Type-B, USB Type-C, used only for firmware updates, so that is very important. You have the I2S input, coaxial optical, AAC, a Bluetooth antenna socket, a 10 MHz clock input, so you can use it with the C16 or C18 clock generators. And there's another surprise, an Ethernet port that lets you play music directly from Rune. The usual RCA and XLR outputs are also present, of course, and those can be fixed or not, so it can be used as a preamplifier if you please. As for tech inside it, you can see a beautiful layout split into three rooms with metal plates in between. In the first room, you can spot two encapsulated 50 watts linear transformers, one for the analog section and another one for its digital section, which seems like an amazing design decision. In the second room, you can spot the second most important part of this unit, its clocking system controlled by a custom ultra low noise clock synthesizer, which was called K2, which is helped by a fairly large femtosecond crystal oscillator. Custom made clocks and synthesizers are something that's usually found in five figure units Certainly not at this price point, and that makes me already quite excited. Besides dealing with the clocking system, the board in the middle also houses an overkill power filtering stage by the help of Nikicon Gold Tune capacitors that are specifically designed for audio applications. There's a vertical daughter board in between the second and third room that houses its streamer, renderer, the digital receiver, the Bluetooth chipset, clock management, and a second order PLL. 
this isn't only a very complex and highly sophisticated board, but the nicest clocking and data management board I've seen on a unit of this price. The third and last room houses beautiful and perfectly arranged art wire resistor ladders that are held by an FPGA. Last, but certainly not least, you can spot a fully discrete output stage consisting of hundreds of discrete devices that are making me very, very happy knowing their unlimited potential. In the end, everything you see is over the top, I don't see compromises or copy-paste, only high quality components that will certainly leave a very big mark when music will start doing its mojo. I think I'm ready for some tunes, so let's hit some eardrums. After trying a bunch of art wire ladder ducks from the house of Denafrips, Musician, Audio GD, Rockna, MSB, I know exactly what's so special about them from affordable to very expensive units. I know what's so interesting about them. Now, affordable art wire ladder ducks uh, aren't usually very, very technical sounding, mostly because they have lower quality resistors and the errors in the resistors are adding up and without a powerful FPGA or something to reconstruct that signal, you are just simply losing bits of information. And that's exactly why affordable, cheap-based oversampling Delta Sigma ducks are winning massively. So all those units from Topping, uh, SMSL, Gustard, many other brands, Matrix Audio and many, many others, are sounding just more technical compared to entry to mid-level r 2 ducks faster, more resolute, they have more information, so everything is just uh, somehow clearer sounding faster. Uh, so this is where R2 R2 ducks, affordable ones, are losing. While R26 and X26 Pro are quite different when rendering the timbre of the music, the biggest shock that I had is that R26 is exactly as technical as the X26 Pro, and mind you, X26 Pro was probably the most technical or one of the most technical sounding Delta Sigma, you know, cheap based DAX. So that's a very big deal because this is a very clean, detailed, fast sounding, all those combined R to wire leather DAC. Now, what I'm going to say next is going probably to, to cost me, but uh, I hope you appreciate my honesty. I find it better in every possible way compared to Dana Fripp's Venus. I find it better compared to Musician Aquarius and I even like it more compared to Denafrips Terminator Plus. I know those are quite big words from the Dark Man himself, but I hope you'll appreciate my honesty. Uh, you know, I'm not listening to this for a day. I'm listening to this one for about three weeks now, so two weeks for burning and one week for listening in my stereo setup and in my headphone setup, and I know that my ears and my equipment cannot lie. Truth to be told, I wasn't that impressed about their entry-level uh, DACs of Gustard, like uh, X18, A18. Those weren't really bad, uh, very technical sounding, but I didn't find them uh, very punchy sounding. They lacked some oomph in the bass. Uh, they didn't have a great tonal balance. I find them uh, quite thin sounding, a little bit brighter sounding, so not so great. Uh, their mid-level devices like A22 and X18 were much, much better. Everything felt improved, but still something was still missing. However, their X26 Pro completely changed all my preconceptions about Gustard, about what I thought about them, because that one was simply an amazing, probably the best uh, Delta Sigma chip-based converter that I tried at my place, still an amazing sounding duck. And it seems that R26 Discrete is again pushing the boundaries of r 2 r technology at very affordable prices. Yes, very affordable prices because 1650 bucks is actually affordable for an r 2 r DAC that sounds this way. Big words from the DAC man himself. And if you're wondering how exactly R26 Discrete is sounding down to the smallest details, so let's uh, start with everything. So first of all, I find it, as I was saying, very, very technical sounding, especially when used with external DDCs like their uh, U18, so Gustav U18, or with the Syncer SU6, which I believe is bumping this one up um, quite a little. So I believe that uh, Gustav bumped that resolution so high that I no longer hear a massive gap or just a gap in between it and X26 Pro, and that's uh, quite a big deal. So. It's very technical, it's very clean, detailed, 
and those small details, micro details, were popping everywhere on my tunes, just pop, 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 pop. It wasn't really a challenge spotting anything playing in the background. The second thing that hit me was its transparency and its depth. I was zooming in and zooming out like a veteran sniper. I was listening to this uh, big orchestra and there was a drummer with a brush stick gently touching its drums, just gently touching. And it was so easily focusing only on that sound when you have a big and loud orchestra in front of you. So everything was very layered, well spread, and it was so transparent and so easy to focus to. Thirdly, it has a massive and I mean really big soundstage. Even with headphones, you can hear that. Even with drivers sitting millimeters away from your eardrums, you can hear that, you can feel that you have a bigger sound. So the difference between it and some chip based converters is actually night and day compared to anything that I've tried. So chip based converters, again, very important. So it's just massive sounding. And if you like, uh, you know, if you listen to via headphones, for example, uh, if you want a bigger sound stage, this will be my first recommendation for you. Uh, very impressive. There is so much more air lingering somewhere around those tracks. Everything is just decompressed. Everything is flying in, you know, its own bubble of sounds. So uh, it's very impressive. And of course, in a stereo setup, it was again uh, just filling my room to excess with sounds. It's very impressive when it comes to soundstage. I can say that even from R to R Ladder Ducks, which are usually quite impressive in terms of soundstage, it's one of the biggest sounding almost on the same level with the Denafrip Terminator Plus, which for me was, is still the soundstage king. So yeah, <laughs> very impressive in all those departments. Last, but uh, certainly not least, as the Transit Response Guy, my second nickname, this one will pound like a gorilla. So yeah, this is very impressive in terms of uh, transients dynamics. This is a very punchy sounding uh, duck and not only in terms of bass lamb, if you have a fairly neutral or you know an ethereal sounding setup then it will bring forward so much more energy everything will feel uh, re revitalized in a way so it's fuller bodied it brings so much uh, emotions back into the music everything is just more alive more colorful more vivid more impactful sounding at the same time uh, if you like your bass then i believe uh, this is one of the few ducks that does bass very very well I actually listen to a lot of electronica, rock and metal on this one. Usually I'm not listening to those genres via r 2 r ducks, especially to electronica, but uh, this was a big surprise because it does electronica very well. It does bass and it does it so, so well. I'll probably go and say it out loud that this is one of the fastest and one of the most impactful sounding r 2 r ducks of the moment. And every single morning when I'm Powering it on, it never ceases to amaze me how alive and how fun toy tapping this unit sounds. If I'm connecting a Trafomatic Primavera via XLR and then a Hyphoman Suzvara, then it changes everything I know about the Hyphoman Suzvara. Those are usually not that powerful in the bass or you know in the mid-range, but together these three are making them something else entirely. So very powerful in the bass, those are almost bass heavy headphones. The very alive, very impactful, very mean sounding. So if you want a fun headbanging and toy tapping experience, then uh, R26 Pro is a very easy recommendation to make. I'm not really sure if that comes from those two transformers or maybe that fully discrete output stage, but clearly it does uh, things quite differently. And in the end, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 when it comes to impact and 9.5 out of 10 in terms of speed, just barely being outperformed by the X26 Pro in terms of speed. Checking out is detail retrieval. First of all, Gustard ditched those op-amps and swapped them with discrete components. And with discrete components, sky is the limit. As an audio engineer, you simply have a complete freedom in doing whatever you please. Uh, those are basically unlimited. They have unlimited potential. So with discrete components, they ditched completely uh, remaining traces of sharpness, listening fatigue, digitus, but they never ditched the amount of information that is being provided to you. So every time I'm listening to this one, I'm uh, just shocked by the amount of information that comes forward. Everything is, comes so naturally and there's so much information coming forward. Even with oversimplified material, I hear 
like a clearer version of that song. Even the simple bass lines appearing like having multiple layers, uh, you know, it's weird saying this, but that's exactly how it sounds. When Still Loving You by Scorpion started playing, uh, I kid you not that uh, my chin started shaking and I was uh, pretty much crying in my office. And a few minutes later, I started laughing, toy tapping and, you know, head banging. And if a unit like this can do this in a span of half an hour, then I believe that words are really unnecessary. And what I want to tell you is that this is not only a very technical and clean and detailed sounding unit, but also a very emotional sounding unit because it really somehow connected me with my music. Something that I really cannot say about a lot of uh, docs that I'm hearing on my table, that I'm testing, that I'm reviewing. So this is uh, technical and emotional at the same time. I don't know why, but it just reminds me about that uh, Studer tape player, Studer, Studer tape player that I've heard in the 90s. It just reminds me about that experience that I had still in my mind very vivid, although it happened a long time ago. So it is clear to me that R26 uh, Discrete is not only a goose bump machine, but also a very technical sounding DAC that merges everything that I want a high-end DAC to be. When it comes to sound stage and depth, this is really one of the biggest sounding art war DACs that I've experienced so far. It's almost on the same level with something like Terminator Plus by Denafrips, and it's bigger sounding than any other chip-based Delta Sigma DAC, and the difference is not small, it's actually quite massive. So via headphones, you feel that the sounds are not happening somewhere around here or inside your head, but everything is hovering all around you. Uh, and that can be felt not only with open bear headphones, but also with uh, closed bear headphones, with Odyssey LCD5, which are not that impressive uh, in terms of sound stage. So everything is just uh, nicely briefing all around you, nicely located all around you. That was uh, quite interesting. Via loudspeakers, you feel that there is a higher pressure in the room. You feel that every corner is filled with music to excess. So everything is just uh, heavier. The air is harder to breathe. Everything is bolder, fuller bodied in a way. So everything that has to do with soundstage, depth, layering is simply amazing on this one. After trying Helvegen by Wardruna, it instantly teleported me into a different realm, different country, different place. You know, the sound of the crows, of the word drums, uh, the sound of the wind just made it so, so special. And in just a split second, I was already sharpening some swords and drinking some ale. So it's one of those units that not just, uh, you know, take it or leave it. Do you like this sound or not? No, this is not like that. It makes you think, it uh, just unlocks your imagination somehow, so it plays really well with your imagination. Tunes like this might cripple a mediocre or entry or mid-level chip based Delta Sigma DAC, but that never happened with the R26 Discrete. And it goes without saying that this is a very impressive unit in terms of soundstage, layering and depth. Moving on to my series setup, and replacing my excellent sounding Gold Note Distant Plus streamer DAC and preamplifier with this one, uh, followed by two benchmark AHB2 power amplifiers and two CAF reference free loudspeakers, I've got exactly what I dreamed about. So it was slightly faster, it was more impactful, it had a nicer bass punch in a way, uh, it had more details. It was better in every way compared to the Gold Note Distant Plus, but mind you, this worked only as a DAC and preamplifier, and that one worked as a streamer DAC and preamp. That one is more feature packed, but when working just as a DAC, this one is just simply better. And I might replace my Gold Note uh, Distant Plus, which is my daily driver in my loudspeaker setup with this one. It's just a better sounding unit, and that's a huge compliment for the R26 Pro because it's by three times cheaper compared to that one. This one was uh, pulling more information from my tracks and it was nicely arranging everything all around me. So I believe that it was more technical sounding and at the same time also more engaging and more fun sounding compared to the Gold Note. So my setup, especially my loudspeakers and my amplifiers are fairly neutral. I find them actually both dead neutral and I choose them that way so I could do my reviews better. So I would know what is warm, what is bright, what is sharp, what is dark sounding and so on. 
But when I'm listening to music, I need a warmer source. I need something that will awake emotions, that will make me, you know, feel great while listening to music. And I believe that R26 Pro does exactly that so easily. I just stay with those benchmarks and with my caps and just swapping my DAC and the sound just took a 180 degree turn. And I'm again enjoying my music. Moving on to frequency response. This one will juggle that Mjolnir hammer pretty easily. It will bring the full might of the low end of the sub bass. Uh, and if you tried only chip based Delta Sigma converters by now, then the difference will be big. You'll be surprised by the immediate change in terms of bass. Sometimes it could be too impactful. Sometimes it's too much, especially with something like a Traphomatic Primavera. That one is an overkill headphone amplifier. So everything that I'm listening to this setup is just uh, punchy, impactful, just almost painful at times with electronic tunes. So it knows how to do bass and it does that very, very well. Even with something like oversimplified material, it adds, uh, you know, a flair of refinement in those bass notes. Like I'm listening to a very complex rendition of that bass line. So I'm really hailing artwork converters in terms of bass, slam, speed and impact, but uh, you know, uh, this is uh, quite a different animal, a very different change of pace. And uh, finally, I can, you know, I can recommend a very good artwork deck with electronic tunes, with rock, with metal, with modern tunes, because it knows how to deliver those bass lines pretty easily. So it's very clean in the bass, it, there is no distortion, there is an infinite extension, so if you like hearing those 20 Hz notes, that will be no problem with this one. Another highlight of Art Warla the Dax, and pretty much one of the reasons, one of the biggest reasons why you might invest or you should invest in such digital creatures, is the rendition of the mid-range. It's mid-range, it's, uh, it's sweeter, it's smoother, it's more refined, it's very relaxing in a way. It's like listening to unamplified music. Everything just pours naturally towards your eardrums. Nothing is being pushed, nothing is being you know, forced inside your ears. It's very natural happening, very easy. It's like listening to real music somewhere, you know, in an open space, something like that, with unamplified instruments. So that's, uh, that's the big deal. Neutral tune setups like my loudspeaker setup will be getting a much needed presence and soul in the mid-range changing their tonality completely, just adding some richness in your room and of course some dopamine into your bloodstream. There wasn't really a musical genre that didn't work on the R26 discrete. Everything uh, from electronica, modern tunes, acoustic music, everything was great. Something that I cannot say about a few r to war leather ducks of today. When it comes to treble performance, on one hand, it's not rolling off parts of the upper treble like most Dana Fripps ducks are doing by default. On the other hand, it's not really overly sharp, overly contoured sounding in the treble as well. So if with uh, chip based Delta Sigma ducks converters, I'm feeling my music like an empty walnut shell, very defined, very contoured uh, shell. With this one, I see the shell, but I also feel everything what's inside it. I see the walnut, its shape, its taste, so it's, you know, it's more textured sounding, it's denser sounding somehow, and that feels especially in the treble. Musical notes will be taking a very clear form while sounding as musical instruments, like real instruments at the same time. So you can feel that this one is made from wood, that one is made from metal, that is a brush stick. So it's natural, organic, smooth, but also real sounding at the same time because there is no ringing in the treble, there is no over sharpness happening in the treble, so everything comes more naturally in a way. For a proper showdown in between R26 Discrete and their best chip based converter X26 Pro, please head over to my website, I've put a link below, it's on chapter 10, and it's a comparison that you don't want to miss. As for my conclusion, I know exactly how you feel about every single word that I just said, but trust me, I'm here only for the truth and only for the truth alone. Nobody pays influences or sponsors these reviews. I'm not here for the manufacturers. I'm here only for you, sharing my honest impressions with you, and I hope you can appreciate that. In about three weeks, I tried finding some cons. I was swapping it to my studio setup, to my headphone setup, 
multiple times, but sorry, I failed because uh, in my view, this is a flawless sounding art while at the dock. I'm putting it in the top five best ducks that I've heard at my place at any price. So that tells a lot. If I would need to pick a little, that would be it's plastic remote control that feels kind of cheap, uh, not that impressive. And of course it lacks a user manual in English, but that's not a big deal. You can download that anytime. Apart from this, again, this is a world-class dock and uh, it easily deserved my highest gold award. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. A much longer in-depth review can be found below. Please check that out. It literally contains about three times the information. And as usual, listen to my tunes, be positive, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.